How's it going everyone? It's Lummy here and welcome to some more Five Nights at Smooches 4. I decided that I wanted to revisit this game as part of my 700 series. Because I don't know, I just thought it'd be kind of fun to look back on this game again. The one game that kind of helped me get to 500 and 600 subs pretty damn quickly. Um, <laughs> because I hit 400 subscribers when I... I had started playing this and then, ooh, 5 to 600, which is pretty much why I did not make specials for those milestones, because I hit them really quickly and I just did not know what I was doing, but I just wanted to look back on this game, maybe just do a video playing some of the nights and all that. Not a full thing, unless people really want me to do another one. Maybe give different thoughts in the game. It's been... A good year or so now, this game is over a year old now. And I wanted to just see how well I can remember it. So here we are. Back in the first shift. Eh. And of course we have good old Proteus and Bertram to introduce the danger. <laughs> it's kind of cool playing this again, I'm not gonna lie. It's been a bit. I was meaning to do more of the Smudges 5 demo when I, uh... And I'm not gonna play the phone call, I know what I'm doing. Wow. Good job I bought this thing. Um, I was gonna do the Smudges 5 demo. Um, I didn't do level 2 when I first played it, mostly because... I was having an issue just recording it. I don't know what was going on. Like, that level in particular was, like, super resource demanding for some reason. I just could not record it. So that's kind of why I never actually got around to doing it. But since then, then there has been a new demo um, for Smudges 5, so I have been considering taking a look at that, and hopefully I can record it. I should be able to, at least. Hopefully I won't have such an issue doing level 1, because I was there for a while. Quite a while, in fact. And I didn't actually beat it in the end. I believe I ended up watching, um... Um... Imaginary play it with a bunch. Which was kind of fun. <laughs> if I remember correctly, the item is right there. Yeah. For those who don't know, there are cutscenes you can unlock in the game. Uh, you can find items through the nights, and... That's the first one in... This camera down here, this is where Moe comes into play, and later nights. So yeah, obviously most people would know that by now, but yeah, good old night one. It's a fairly safe night. I'm pretty sure the only two threats we have are um, Proteus and Bertram, who are relatively simple to deal with. They come from the sides. When they come into the door, you just blast them. Theoretically, you don't even need to look at the camera for those two. Uh, which is kind of the strategy that I ended up using for uh, nights. Two onwards, pretty much. Um, let's see, if I remember correctly. I pretty much used this camera, this one, and this one. These are the three cameras that I mainly used throughout my series. Because you don't really need to watch Proteus or Bertram. You'll pretty much know when they're going to show up, because there'll be an alert sound. And when they show up at the windows, you hear, like, sound. Only one of them, I'm pretty sure only one, can appear at a time, so you're fine either way. And then you just blast them, and they're good. Um, you go here for, for uh, Moe's mechanic. Over here, you don't necessarily need to use this camera, but it's good just in case. Um for Scruffy, just to get an idea of if he's there or not, but you can kind of time him based on his laughs. And then of course you got this camera for the train, um, just to kind of check on him. You can kind of time it, I guess, if you know exactly how to, but it's just a good idea to keep an eye on that one. Uh, what time is it? 3am? Alright, uh, probably it should be coming out pretty soon. He usually is the first one that shows up. At least I'm fairly certain, um, he always shows up first, I think, and there's Gerald. 
There you are. Good old Proteus. Should take a bit to actually reach us. And yeah, big hang. Goes to this camera. Oh no, it goes right to this camera and then down to here. This camera's actually using the custom night. Um, oh, he goes here. I actually have not actually seen him there before because I never actually bothered to look there. Um, custom night was also something I probably could have done. I uh, just didn't think to get around to it. And there's uh, Bertram. There he is. So here comes Proteus. And then I just press control to deal with him as soon as he gets here. You have plenty of time, so you're fine. I actually don't think I got jump scared by either Bertram or Proteus in my initial let's play, if I think about it. Because they're pretty easy to deal with, so there's like not much of a threat. And then you have back here, um, which ain't really used until... Was it like three on? I think. This is where Diesel 10 shows up. But yeah. It's pretty much mechanics down. I remember Night 6 being <laughs> the fun thing for me. It was definitely a challenge. I don't see myself doing it again. Uh, live at least. Because I don't know, that, <laughs> that night was interesting because I did it, I forgot about you, I actually completely forgot about Shadow Stanley, but you have to pull your camera up to get rid of him otherwise he crashes the game. But night six I had to do off camera without, com well not off camera because I recorded it obviously, but without commentary. Um, I had to do so many attempts of it and like write down specifically the timings of when people spawn in and then go off that and I remember doing like loads of attempts one night then I went to sleep woke up the next morning did like I think one or two attempts and one then and <laughs> yeah my reaction is in the let's play uh, back back old yonder back when I was known as so hard still <laughs> Which, I'm in the credits of this game as so hot because, um... Obviously, as people know, I voiced Duke in this game. And as you uh, play through the nights and stuff, you also unlock uh, extras, which is... Pretty much just showing off uh, models and such, as well as some art and all that. But yeah, as we got that item, you unlock the first Midsoda Origins cutscene, which I don't think I'll play for all these, but for the sake of this one video, I'm going to play the first one at least, so I can reminisce over my voice acting, I guess. <laughs> I'm no longer voicing Duke, though, and I'll go into detail on that in a sec. Honestly, though, you're some of the best company that I've had in years. Thanks, Duke. Man, if only there's been some troubles at this place. And still... there's imaginary. <laughs> yes, who's I agree. Also, not I voicing Steamer anymore. Find out who is responsible for stealing all these trucks just to make themselves look like they're the best engine around here. Hey, you don't think it could be that number two engine? I forgot his name, but he seemed like, well. Kind of unpleasant. Honestly, I have no idea, but I'll be sure to ask him when he shows his face. Hey, the railway hasn't got time for you two to be playing with each other all day. Now go get some work done. Oh, get lost, Mudger. All you ever do is make the situation worse. Look who's talking. The railway will get worse if you two turds just sit around here all day doing nothing. Ah, oh, excuse me there, young'un. What did you just say? Well, pardon me, youngun. I was just going to ask you politely. This line in particular took me a while to do. Of the missing trucks, or if you knew anything about them at all. Are you accusing me of stealing supplies for other companies? Do you know what we did to engines like you in the war? Wouldn't be anything here that I haven't seen before, big guy. <laughs> 
Are you sure about that, Granddad? Hey, punk. Stay out of this and don't deliver your stuff. I don't want to have to sort you out as well. Ooh, look at the slime ball acting all tough. Shut up. Oh, this, this line as well had a lot of takes. Children. Shove off your mangy barbie. <laughs> I'm out of here. Smudger, you better go back to work right now before the man. I still have my lines on my computer of all my um line takes and all that, and there's actually quite a lot of funny little outtakes and randomness that spawned some memes in the community. <laughs> oh, that's going to cause um, confusion and delay. But the lines where I had to be angry kind not exactly angry, but just loud took me a while because I'm not a loud person and I had to kind of get the direction right. I did it eventually, but there are some lines that I do look back at and feel like I could have done a lot better at. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned, I'm no longer forcing Duke. Um, mostly because... Voice acting's not my thing. Um, it was a fun experience. I had actually voiced um, briefly the phone guy in another FNAF fan game that's uh, in the works called uh, Golden Memory 2. I'm um, no longer the phone guy in that either, but I I just kind of thought about it for a while and realised that voice acting is not my kind of thing. It takes a lot of effort. It's not easy to do if you want to do a good job in terms of your quality. I have the microphone for it, and I could do the experience for it, but it's just not for me. <laughs> I'm not the best when it comes to most directions. Um, it took me ages to do those angry lines. Um, and one group that I do have over my Duke voice, as much as I actually did enjoy doing it for the time that I had the role, um, is that I feel like half the lines just sound like myself. Um, I had a hard time just trying to deepen my voice. Like, I'm kind of deep, like, but without altering the audio, it still just sounded like myself. Um, <clears throat> so, a lot of the audio is actually pitch shifted, and you can actually tell during some lines where the audio completely changes tone and pitch because I didn't actually make a note of what pitches and settings I was using and recording sessions were happening over the game's development. Um, I didn't have my lines done all at once so I kind of forgot to remember what my settings were but there are definitely lines you can tell that were recorded at a later point compared to previous ones but yeah, there's a lot that goes into voice acting, and I realised it's not for me. <laughs> I'm more of a casual, chill person, and yeah, I like working on my own stuff. And but it was kind of fun trying something new. It was the it was actually my first time properly doing voice acting. Um, I had done a role before in another FNAF fan game prior to Smudges 4, but it wasn't really that much of a role and I didn't, didn't do that grand then, so the Duke voice was my first proper good role, I want to say, and I definitely appreciate ha having the role for the time that I had it, and I wish the new actor all the best of luck with voicing Duke in Smudges 5 and maybe other games too. Anyway, Moving on from my tangent of dukiness, we have Sarge GT, who you don't actually have to destroy to win. Um, you can just, uh, I'll just show it off. I'll just, I'll just not kill him. You can actually uh, just outrun him if you want. You pretty much just gotta survive until the end here. And then you basically win. There we go, yep. <laughs> and then Sarge GT ends up dying anyway. <laughs> so yeah, in between nights you do have a bit of a breather with these little missions. Um, kind of, at least. I know the one mission, one or two missions actually kind of are treated as knights in terms of their gameplay. 
those ones are interesting. But difficulty spike. Difficulty spike. Introducing two new opponents, you have your Scruffy. As well as the, what is considered everyone's bane of existence, Moe, but I never really had much an issue with him. Never really did I have an issue with him. I probably don't remember the mechanic all that well, but... I don't get it. I hope Smudge is alright. Yeah. I did give him that voice activated headset that engines could use. So, if I remember correctly, I'm going to try my hardest to explain it. And again, can he just use his powers he gave I'll explain it in a sec. Well, Sorry. The devil, I guess. So, over here you have your panel where you can close the entrances to you, which is this is how Mario will get to you. If you come over here to this camera, you click on here, if it's white, you're fine. If it turns any other color, let's say it turns red, you just come over here, you click red, and it'll close that, and you're safe. You gotta remember to open it eventually, because it does use power. Um, I did have a few moments in my Let's Play where... <laughs> I ran out of power without realising, <laughs> which is kind of funny. I'm pretty sure that I had a moment where I survived on no power and, like, Moe was really kind to me. <laughs> he did, like, he did wonders. He did not attack in the moment where I did need him to do so. So yeah, Scruffy. Pretty sure it laughs about three times before showing up here, and then you just turn around and you're good. Until he disappears, you can see him up there on the camera. Or the TV. Mind you. So this is my strat. Essentially just occasionally going off the camera, going in, clicking on that. Occasionally checking on other cameras if necessary. And then just going from there. It gets stressful later at nights, but yeah. I'm also pretty sure it's about 2am that things start actually happening on this night. So I should be fine for now, but... So it's blue, so do that. You wait a little bit. See, it's blue still, now it's gone back to white. So then you just open the door. And that's how you deal with Moe. Don't exactly understand <laughs> what everyone's issue is with Moe. Like, everyone had such a hard time dealing with him. But his mechanic is incredibly simple to learn. I remember that there was some kind of issue in. Uh, the old demos where it was just the design of this screen was different but the understanding of the mechanic was pretty much the same it was essentially the same thing just a little different come on green there we go And then I'll wait for Bertram to get through. Doors are open. Scruffy has left once. I'm gonna try and go off that laughter mechanic idea that I had. So third time he should be here. Okay, maybe not. You're there. There's a toy by the way. You laugh about four times and then you make your move. You burst through the doors. Like so, and then you turn around and then... Yeah, I was a little bit slow on the draw for that one, but... Everything's hunky-dory. Here comes Proteus. We are so far fine. On that blue. Open you. 
and then we just recharge. It's quite simple. A, a, a nice try. Nice try, Stanley. Nice try. Turn around and leave. And it's almost, it is now 5 a.m. We're doing pretty, pretty decent. See, it's a pretty simple strat. Pretty simple strat for this night. Really. Come on. There's a bit of a rhythm I'm noticing as well. You should laugh again. Mm -hmm. And then you'll appear. I'll just turn around. <laughs> there you are. And we won. Piece of kink. <laughs> but of course it gets harder from there. Much harder in fact. I'll wrap things up for this video by playing the Big Rigs Battle. Reference to Big Rigs Over the Road Racing, I'm fairly certain with the name title. As far as I know. And this is the infamous, oh it's not infamous, but <laughs> the one that also a fair few people have had uh, some fun with, the um, Mines mission, where you just drive around and you drive into cars according to the trailer. <laughs> Let's see how uh, quick I can do this. There's the mugger. That's fine. I got it. Let's turn around quickly because you can't go back that way. It's a little fiddly to turn. I didn't get that mine. Okay. There's the alleyway that you can actually squeeze through if you know how. <laughs> Eight. Come on, there we go. Nine, and the last one was there. I gotta turn around, I'll just go through here. And there we go. Easy as pie. And then we just take on Greg in a little boss fight. I always thought this was like besides a seaside or something because of the blue, but I'm pretty sure this is just like a road. I think. <laughs> or something like that. Take that. Ah, oh, I took damage. Mm. No hit run game over. <laughs> and then oh crap. I did not mean to do that. There we go. <laughs> Budge him again, making him not appear on the screen at all. Eh, there we go. <laughs> Total carnage. But yeah, that's mission two, and I think that is a good spot to wrap up, because I've recorded for about half an hour now. I think that would be good enough content for one episode at least. This has been my little revisit to Five Nights at Smudges 4. If people would like to see me do another revisit to this game, do another episode, I will consider it. I have a lot of other stuff that I'd like to do on my channel in terms of the 700 special series and all that stuff, but we'll see. Maybe I'll livestream this game. <laughs> that could be an idea. That could actually be fun to do. I might, I might consider it. But yeah, this has been my little, little tiny reminiscing of me playing Smudge 4 all the time ago back in 
2019. Was it 2019? Yeah, it was 2019, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, was it? I don't even remember. I'm old. <laughs> Just like Duke is. But, yes, I'm going to wrap things up here. I hope you all enjoyed. This has been Lummy, and I will see you next time.